calling all consumer goods, business owners, and marketing professionals. Does planning content ahead of time stress you out? Do you want to run Instagram and Facebook ads, but just aren't sure where to start? If your answer is yes and yes, then our mini course was made for you. It's 100% free and packed with essential tactics that you can implement as soon as today. To join in, visit our website at umymarketing.com slash mini course. All right, let's get on with the pod. Welcome to the Umai Social Circle, where we talk consumer goods tips to help business owners and marketers grow. We're Allison and Karen, co-founders of Umai Marketing, and we're being joined today by Lamar Romero. He's CEO, Executive Dragon from Dragon Spirits Marketing. Dragon Spirits is the number one brand ambassador gig marketplace that helps match growing brands with passionate brand ambassadors for activations across the U.S. Welcome, Lamar. Thank you. Glad to be here. We're glad to have you. So let's get right into it. We're curious, how did Dragon Spirit, first of all, we love the name (laughs) and we love the background. We like how you just, you own it. Um, So tell us more how Dragon Spirits came to be. Sure. Yeah. My wife and I um, actually started in the tequila industry. I came out of high tech and one day my wife came to me and she said, hey, think about helping this tequilero. He needs help with his tequila and, and we should do this. And I was like, great, I've got some 401k left to sacrifice. Let's go and do that. And so we helped push a tequila uh, in Texas for a whole year back in 2012 and figured out we really liked the industry and there was a lot of things we wanted to change. So Dragon Spirits became a thing because while we were doing that, I'd see a lot of promotion going on. That was typically by model types that are in their early 20s. And unfortunately, they didn't know a lot about the brands that they were pushing. And so, you know, I mistakenly or unmistakably looked at my wife one day and I said, oh, if I ever get in this industry, I'm going to change everything. I'm going to teach these people how to sell. I'm going to train them and educate them and make sure they can go out there and do a great job. And uh, for better or for worse, that's what we we did. And we chose the name Dragon Spirits because we wanted to be different. We didn't want to be model company this or model company that. We wanted to basically, uh, we were the first in 2013 to my knowledge, to kind of change the paradigm. We didn't hire uh, people based on looks at all. We were only one of the only companies at the time that didn't have body measurements on their website application. We just said, hey, if you have a great personality and you want to promote, you can come be a dragon. And that's how it kind of took off. What an old school, crazy approach that like happened for so long, even in CPG, like at trade shows and things like that. And you just never really... It like, have, have you ever like stopped to actually think about what's happening? Like, yeah, it's being hired because they look good. <laughs> it's still a thing. And, and I'll tell you, when I was just beginning, like we had businesses that literally wouldn't hire us because they're like, no, we've seen your people in the field. And I'm like, yeah, but that person I just hired, who's, you know, not a model looking gal, uh, just sold 20 units of that thing. While that other gal who was right next to her sold two. And so um, that just be kind of came our thing. Um, and then now you fast forward to 2021. Now, look, models are still a big part of the industry. And I have nothing personal with a model or somebody who's attractive. If you can be attractive and go out and sell great, then you're, you're a triple threat and you've got a great personality. And so um, we welcome folks from all wakes of life. I mean, some of my best dragons have been retired 70-year-old people. I go out and just do a great job. Um, so yeah, but I, I'm with you there. It is an old school industry and it still is, but it is shifting just because everything, everything's shifting. We all have to, we all have to change. I'm really glad you noticed that and decided to make a change with the brand that you started. And just thinking about that, it's like, I'm, I am much more likely to approach like a 70 year old woman or man who wants to give me snacks or liquor than like a super hot person, you know, that is much more relatable. So it it is. And that approachability (laughs) approachability is, is important. I've had, I had a small liquor owner tell me that at a trade show, he was like, you know what I like about your folks is that I feel comfortable because the mom who's shopping with her kid um, can be approached and, and have a conversation and not feel like, you know, like, like exactly what you just said. Awesome. Well, so 
Let's just talk about like the current state of brand activations in person, especially with how crazy the past couple years have been and how it Mm -hmm. kind of looks like it's going to be shaping out to be in the future. So tell us more about this and what you see happening in 2022 with this shift. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, first let's define brand activation. Brand activation is a tasting or a trade show or a festival or a street team. It's basically activating your brand where, where crowds get together. And regardless of what's going on with COVID or, or any other uh, social shifts that we're seeing with technology, people still like to get together. So we feel like this type of brand activation is going to continue. And now it's going to be uh, all set or added with other strategies, such as social media marketing and, and advertising as well. But the brand activation industry is definitely going to a place where, especially for small and medium businesses, it needs to be affordable. And it needs to be, and it needs to be um, available. And I'm seeing a lot of small businesses really like what we're doing. In other words, being out there, it, it, even if you can only afford a couple of activations a month to be at that that clutch store or that clutch festival and have some help, have some hands there that are, that know your brand can kind of do the heavy lifting while maybe you're off meeting with um, the, uh, the the store owner who might be present at that particular festival or activation um, is absolutely critical. And so uh, part of what we're trying to do is set up a system to where small businesses can can utilize our, our, our technology without having to spend a lot of money every month. That's cool. And you mentioned how brands, I mean, this goes beyond just having an in-person activation. What kind of data are you collecting and using that brands can use across all platforms and digital marketing and and everything else. Yeah, yeah. When, when we when we go back and talk about what an old school industry, I can remember one of my competitors back in 2016 was literally having their brand ambassadors fill out a piece of paper, take a picture of it, and submit that as a report. Like, what are you going to be able to do with that data? Um, while we were, you know, exporting everything to a spreadsheet and and giving nice table rows and columns and tables, that was considered. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you actually do that. Now, as we go forward in 2021, it's all about data visualization, right? And so we're actually doing a, a WeFunder right now. We're raising a million dollars so that we can take our homegrown software application, the Dragon Engagement Network, or the Dragon's Den, where the dragons live, and we're trying to reshape it to where we can give true data visualization to our customers so that if you had 10 reports done in the state of Texas, and they were all at all different cities, you could be able to say, well, what was my spin in Houston versus Austin, and how many units did I sell this SKU versus that SKU? Um, if you're a national cus- company, you're a big company that's doing hundreds of activations a month, you know, what is it looking like per region? What is it looking like per store? What is it looking like when I went to that festival? Where did my follow through come after that festival? And so that kind of data is what we're providing, I would say, in a light way and hoping we're going to be providing that in a heavy way as we go forward in 22, 22, 2022 and 2023, when we um, add some of these, these features to our software solution. Pretty cool. And I imagine just collecting a ton of in-person, real qualitative data yeah. along the way, you know, kind of helps people define their core customer and all that. Absolutely. You know, capturing um, uh, maybe some demographics that you're seeing, uh, capturing, um, uh, how many people you saw, how many units you moved. I mean, ca- those are kind of the basic metrics that we're looking at. But also, even when we get to the nitty gritty details, like what were some of the comments about my product? You know, I I remember one time we had a client that we, we simply, I, after reading all the reports, like, I, I don't think I can help you. I don't think this is working. And a lot of the comments were coming back that it just didn't taste right, didn't have the right feel. And I tried to communicate that as honestly as I could, because I never want to be in a place where we're not providing value. Um, we agreed to walk away, but those were good comments. Like that's what you want brand activation, whether it's good or bad, you want to hear whatever that's, whatever the data that's being provided so that you can go out and do a better job. And so, you know, for better or for worse, that's the kind of data that we collect when we do these brand activations. It's, it's easy to forget, but it does need to, you know, appeal in some way to some sort of people. So that, that is extremely important. And 
just, you know, on the digital marketing side, we need that sort of data as well. I mean, we're looking through Amazon comments and uh, social media comments to try to really understand the customer and their pain points and and what they are like and what they're interested in. Um, So it's really cool that you're collecting that kind of data. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, a big question I have, and I think that some people that are listening may have is like, what kind of, how do you set these uh, folks up for success? Like what does training look like for your dragons? Yeah, we got to remember that we're part of the gig economy. And so, I mean, this was the gig economy before it was cool. When models were doing this in the 80s and 90s, nobody called it that. They're like, yeah, I got a modeling gig, right? But this is a core part of the gig economy. So one, we're trying to get gig workers out there to realize that they can do this. If you have a personality and you want to make $25 to $30 an hour uh, being in, in one place for three to four hours, not putting wear and tear in your car and telling the story of a brand, and exciting people, then this is the job for you. But now when we find those folks, that's the kind of the secret sauce around how we, at least that we do it. We actually have a culture test that dragon must pass in order to even be interviewed in the system. So half the dragons that apply don't even take it. Of that half, about 70% of them pass it with an 85 or greater. Once we get that core, um, that core brand ambassador and they do the interview, the interview, the interview process is more like, wow, you're going to educate me. You're going to teach me these brands. The other seven firms I worked for didn't. They didn't give a damn. They just give me a sheet. And so they get a quick expectation that, man, you're going to be taking a lot of tests here because we can't train gig workers, but we can educate them, right? And so then we have over 100 courses set in our own learning management system within our software. So for instance, there's a beer course, you know, how, how do I how do I be deadly just to know what beer is and how it's made, wine, uh, scotch, bourbon? But then it goes to brand centric. You know, now you got to pass this bat, you got to pass this achievement and get this badge on your profile for um, like 50 cent for his um, brands and brand uh, that we we represent. Like we went, I personally made that achievement for for 50 steam because you know 50 cent wasn't gonna make a, a branding video for nine or 10 minutes to do this, but we wanted to make sure that we went out and represented him well to really hit his core, the core uh, things that he wanted to talk about. Like, you know, this is a, this is a luxury brand. This is a brand for people who are, are celebrating life, you know? And so you to get those essences to a brand ambassador, you have to have a good repeatable, scalable solution to do so. And that's what we do with our dragon achievement system to basically educate these dragons so they can go out and they can promote and really tell the story and not just say, hey, I've got a sample of this thing. That's so cool. I mean, at $25 to $30 an hour, take some tests yeah. and get it, yeah. get your expertise up and go kill it. I mean, if you're good, if you're an extrovert, you're good at talking to people, you you can absolutely do this. So do you only do this for spirits brands or have you ever done it for just like food and beverage? Oh, absolutely. We do this for beer, wine, liquor, and food. CPG brands. Awesome. Um, we've had some good, uh, good success with um, selling cassava flour pretzels. Um, once the COVID relinquishes itself a little bit and grocery opens up more, we're going to be doing tastings around a, a pickle uh, salsa. So uh, CPG is something that I'm really wanting to attack more, even though there's spirits in the brand and that's how we started. We're dragon spirits, but we're the spirit of a dragon, right? And so we want to go out and really promote any type of small and medium sized business that's growing to, to do this all across America. And right now we're in, we went from three States in 2020 to a little over 30 this year. Um, And that's how we've expanded our footprint so quickly. And I'd say we have our toes in a lot of these other States, but we do have like five or six States that were core and right here in the United States so far while we're still bootstrapping. Fast growth. Well, Unfortunately, I have to ask it. You brought up COVID and I am so interested to hear what happened when COVID happened. I mean, it's it's still happening, obviously. Um, how did that change the trajectory of your business and people who rely on activations? Yeah, well, 
<laughs> <laughs> you know, when 2019 ended, I can remember uh, doing a champagne toast to my wife and having a tear in my eye because we've been, you know, building our business for seven years and we finally may feel like we were, we we're going to make it like 2020 was going to be our year. Right. Um, in March of 2020, we canceled every activation in the system. Uh, we waived all fees and we sat on our hands for six months as we, we waited to see what was going to happen. Um, I have to say that government assistance was hugely important to us. Uh, all my, I furloughed everybody except for myself and my financial person. And um, they all got paid well enough to, you know, be furloughed and to take care of their families during this time. What I found that coming out of COVID was a lot of pent up demand. <laughs> so at the end of 2020 Q4, we went from no revenue to instantly profitable in Q4 2020, because when the floodgates started opening, brand activation was huge. And then finally, karma happened for our company in terms of our achievement system, because I had made a, an achievement based on the COVID and that you had to wear your mask and you had to pass our test and you had to watch our, our video and understand you need to go out there with gloves and a mask and you weren't going to argue with nobody and you were going to go do it and you're going to be good at it and you're going to get an extra $5 and pay for doing it. And, and that really worked because then all of a sudden we had uh, stores going, Hey, go hire those dragon guys. They know what they're doing. They're the only ones showing up completely COVID ready. And so we got a lot of business coming into Q4 2020. So when I look back I at it, it, yeah, That's and great. then and then you know government money too. So with with PPP loans that were forgivable. So when I look back at it, I go, and I think I actually might look back at COVID and go, well, that might have been a real turning point for our business for the better. For the better, you know, we're not out of the weeds yet, so I can't go back and look at it like that yet. But but you know, it's we learn to adapt and. And just like I, I always keep saying, like, you know, digital is extremely important, but people aren't going to start, stop congregating groups. I mean, we're human beings. So this type of brand activation is always going to be important. It's going to change and it's going to, it's going to alter itself. But getting in front of a group of people and going, I've got this wonderful thing and you need to try it is still going to appeal to folks um, as we continue in this post COVID world. That's, that's really cool to hear that you guys were prepared and, you know, keeping it safe and you did, it sounds like you did it right. Um, I am curious though, should, do you talk to your brands openly about this and, you know, what's the backup plan that brands should have in their back pocket if things are to shut down or if, or when things are mm -hmm. to shut down again? Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I always tell my brands that, Brand activation strategy is just one part of your marketing strategy. Like I actually, when a brand, when I see a brand's just doing that, I actually try to have a talk with them if I can, if I can have an honest conversation say, Hey, you might need to back up some of these efforts with some social media, you know, maybe drive people to our brand activations, whether it's a festival or a trade show or a tasting or a demo, um, because you have to have a full round strategy and we can only control what we can control. So as Omicron is the new scare, and we've already seen our northern markets start to shut down, New York is shutting down right now, you know, what we do is because we already have a, a very friendly business way of doing things, we don't have any contracts. We're one of the only companies that I know that do this that don't have contracts. So you can come and go as you please. So if somebody's got 20 activations in the system that are going to be fulfilled for the rest of the month and COVID shuts it down, usually there's cancellation fees if you pull something out, but we're like, hey. We have all cancellation fees. Like it's not, it's not under your control. And so we just try to do the right thing and in, in that, um, you know, and hopefully that brand's got some other kind of marketing strategy because now that brand activation part of it is being shut down. And, th and that can really hurt a, a growing band, especially if you just got an HEB and you're like, man, I've got to really show some movement in my product. And and they killed one of your main marketing engines, which, which is I have to get this liquid to lips or this food to mouth because everybody's going to be amazed by it. And now I can't do that. You know, find some other great folks that can, you can consult with that can help you in your other marketing. I, I know two other individuals I can think of on this line that could help with, you know, doing that type of marketing because for right now, brand activation ain't part of it. I mean, we love that omni-channel approach. You got to be hitting people from all sides. 
Absolutely. Um, for brands that aren't in retail yet, um, what are some amazing other places that they can have brand activations? Yeah, you know, uh, we just did a, a great brand activation for a client of ours at Startup CPG, um, which was, you know, um, basically out in front of about 100 to 150 folks in Austin, right at Ellis Bar. You know, brand activation can happen anywhere. And we actually encourage brand owners, especially if you're just starting out, you need to go do it yourself. First of all, you need to, you're the founder and, or you're the, the founding group of people and you're going to sell better than even a trained brand ambassador could. For the most part, you know, we do have some brand ambassadors that can run circles around everybody, including me. But um, for the most part, you know, a, a founder is going to do better. And then go and feel that pain. And then when you start getting to a place where you can't be at five places at once, um, that's when you're going to call us. But you have to be at house parties or uh, farmer's markets or anywhere you can, where you can get in front of a group to kind of start showing off that brand. Cause you never know what's, you know, who's going to be at that party. I, I actually remember doing um, a brand activation. I used to do event parties. And so um, I did a brand activation at some wealthy folks house. And one of the folks in there was uh, a person who worked at HEB came up to me and said, Hey, uh, what do you know about this? I'm in love with this. And I said, Hey, I can put you in touch with the person who, who makes this. Right. And then a few months later, that product made it at HEB. So you just never know. So you got to go out there and you got to get in front of groups, however, and whenever you can. Power of networking. It's, I mean, it's super intimidating to be an introverted person, um, somebody who really is uncomfortable talking to others and getting out there and doing it. So what would be some of your best advice for founders who are nervous to really sing their own praises and to really sell? Wow. That's a good one. You know, we all have our, our talents and our strengths. Um, I've actually seen introverted dragons over the years do very well. You don't always have to be the loud boisterous one to have a good conversation or to attract attention. But in some of those cases, you know, it might help if an introvert uh, founder really had a hard time being out in front of the crowd and doing that, then, you know, you've got to hire help. You've got that needs to be a part of your team strategy. You you need that cheerleader on your team. Uh, unless your product is that damn good and it gets in the right mouth and you know that and then and the whole world's buying it, whether they're buying it on a DTC strategy or from a retail store. But uh, for the most part, every brand needs a, a lot of promotion in order to for folks to know. I mean, I even know that from my own business. We've grown from word of mouth the last seven years. But one of the first things brands say when they, they find my company, they go, where in the heck have you guys been hiding? And why haven't I heard about you before now? And I'm like, I know I'm a marketing company and I suck at marketing my company because I'm marketing 200 other clients, right? And so, um, you know, and that's something I'm aiming to fix. I had to hear that 15 times before I was like, all right, I'm going to go to WeFunder and raise a million dollars so I can stop bootstrapping because, you know, it, it's all about getting out there and having a presence and especially right now, having a great digital presence, right? And having a good digital strategy of, of uh, it really, really does help. And I'm talking to a lot of entrepreneurs that are taking a more D2C approach. And that's really interesting to me because it can work and it can't work. And it just really depends on how you're going to do that. And if you have the right people or the right talent to do it. Um, but it's, it's something that I'm definitely seeing more and more. Yeah. So before this call, you said something really interesting. Um, you told us that there's there's trends in activations and you're telling us that in the beginning of the year, you see health brands who run activations have the best results, which at first we we're like, hmm, and it makes perfect sense. You know, everyone's got their their body goals, their health goals, all those things. Um, so what kind of other interesting trends do you see? throughout the year in terms of activations with brands? Yeah, well, I, I would say that you need to be activating, especially brand activation. If you're a seasonal business, pick that season and go and do it. You know, if you have to spend 50% of your market budget on the three months that, that or that quarter, that's good for you, then go and do it. For spirits, that's OND. That's what they call it, OND, October, November, December, Q4. 50% of all the spear wine and liquor that's bought in America is bought in O&D. 
And so that's a great time to go out and promote. But in January, when everybody's got a hangover, if you've got a health brand and you're not promoting, what the heck's the matter with you? I mean, I don't care if you need to be on the street yelling at the top of your lungs. If you've got something that's non-alcohol or it's healthy, January and February is your time because that's when minds are open. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm hungover from the last three months, man. I really need to make a change, whether that's a protein product or a or healthy energy drink or whatever the case may be. Um, I don't see a lot of brand activation from health brands in Q1. And I always wonder why. Uh, so, you know, you really need to, to kind of understand that trend and follow that. Um, and, I, and, I, and I hope that that answers that question. Yeah, it does. I just it's very interesting. And um and just to be clear, I, I was just thinking about the last thing you said about brands only going D to C. I mean, that's like you said, it's totally fine if that's the route you want to take. But activations aren't just for pushing retail traffic. Activations are for brand awareness, like Karen was saying, word Absolutely. of mouth. Absolutely. They're extremely important, whichever avenue that you're working towards. If I was DTC, I'd be at a trade show festival mm-hmm. with, my, with my QR code on my paper going, if you scan this and you go to my website, you get 25% off today, right? Like that's how you would drive that DTC behavior. And, and but you still need a brand activation to do that. And so, um, but you're absolutely right. It doesn't have to just be retail, though that's typically what we think about that. Yeah. And I would love to hear more. So when I, when I think activations, I think, you know, in groceries or uh, festivals, what, uh, what other like places are you seeing like good results come through? Is it, can you get really niched down, I guess, depending on your brand or. Yeah, you can. I mean, it, it, it really just depends on what you're promoting and what your strategy is and have you identified your audience, right? So if you haven't identified your target audience yet, that might take some time or some consultation, but find what that is and stick your brand activation strategy around that. You know, for instance, I had um, a really great client called Beatbox Beverages. And in the beginning, they, they had this five gallon bag of wine and they hired us for brand activation at HEB stores. And that was tough. You're in the fine wine section going, you want to try my five gallon flavored bag of wine? And even the AGB store, people were like, this is crazy. Like, what are you people in here for? And, but that worked. We, they, we had a lot of uh, orders. We did a lot of it. And then they went to Shark Tank, got a million dollars from Mark Cuban. And Mark Cuban was like, we're not doing that anymore, which sucked for me. But it was great for the brand because they were like, we're going to go to college campuses. And you're, I'm going to put you on planes. You're going to fly a different fraternity sorority houses and you, and that was the right strategy for them at that time of their life where they were. And so sure. And that wasn't good for me, but it was great for the brand. And so you have to kind of understand that audience and, and make sure you're doing those brand activations the right way. But you know, it doesn't have to be, first of all, I'll say this, I'll give out some free advice. Don't ever give your product away for free without sending a representative. So when somebody says, Hey man, I want you to Give me uh, three cases of your stuff for my party. I'll talk about you. You say, yeah, but I'm going to send either myself or my co-founder or somebody from my company or a dragon or whatever, who's going to go and talk about that product for at least five or 10 minutes, because that's the cost of the free, right? And where, where can I buy it? Where can I get it? Um, I see that happen all the time where, you know, fr- products is given away for free without any kind of strategy on one side of it to do it. So, so. It, it, it can be a party, it can be a festival, it can be a trade show, it can be a street team, it can be just about anything you can imagine and put some organization into. But it's an important part of especially any kind of, of retail brand, CPG brand, because there's a lot out there. I mean, if you haven't noticed, there's a new product being developed in America every two minutes. That's an actual fact. So now that you made it to the shelves of HEB or Specs, you're like, great, I made it here. They're like, yeah, there's a hundred other vodkas now. So how are you going to differentiate your vodka from the other hundred? So you have to be continents of that and know that half the battle is getting on the shelf. The other half, the battle is depleting it and putting it in the hands of consumers and the minds of souls. So they'll go out and tell their friends and family. And that's, that's the basics of a, of a just good marketing strategy. 
I love that advice to never give away free product without having someone there to talk about the product because we see that a lot. It's like somebody reaches out, you can afford it, you want to get your hand, you want to get your product into all these people's hands, but what happens, what comes from it? <clears throat> and usually not much. So I love that piece of advice to send someone there because I'm the optimization of that is probably like tenfold. Um, so that's super exciting. Uh, in terms of timelines, like if somebody wanted to work with a dragon, what does that look like? What is, yeah. What does it look like? Yeah. We generally um, make sure that uh, one, we have a, a consultation call to kind of go over what fee structures look like, how much they cost, all that type of deal. But the, the most basic thing, uh, that I, it still uh, it, it still behooves me today is that you know I say well I need a product marketing presentation we internally call it a PMP and they're like what's that and I'm like well it's about two to six page document that we can have at the brand activation so we can show uh, pictures maybe show where it's made or the founder's picture um, that can either be in a flipboard or it can be on a tablet that I sc scroll but it. it Instead of having handouts that are very expensive, point of sale is so expensive. But you know, you can have it, but it's expensive. But instead of having that, we require our dragons to have a PMP. And that's like the, the thing that usually uh, slows us down the most. I'm like, hey, I need your PMP, and it will take uh, the, the company a, a week or two to get it to us. But that that's the that's it. I mean, other than that, if we're activating at a location, um, we need a week's notice sign a CLA, put a credit card on file, uh, but but basically make sure that we understand how we're going to communicate that story so that we can go on and do that great job for you, right? Because we, we call this the dragon engagement model, but there's a hook, there's a story, and there's a close to everything, right? So the hook might be, I want you to try 50 cents cognac. He had every hand in making this. It's delicious. It's way better than Remy. Give it a try. That's the hook. And I'll tell you the story about how 50 Cent made it. Here's his picture. Yeah, he was a rapper from the 90s. It's really cool, right? And then the emotional close my looks, I'm like, I'm so glad you like it. I'd be honored if you take a bottle home, share it with your friends and family. This is how we get our word out, right? So that those three need to be a part of your brand activation strategy, whether you're doing that yourself or you're hiring us to do it, but make sure you're putting that in there because it's all about putting that, that product in the heart and mind of people so they'll take it home. I mean, step one, two, three, closing deals. I like that. Um, when it comes to training the dragons, like to know who the customer is, like to really understand the customer avatar of the brand, is that part of the process? Is that something that the brand owner should really, really understand and be able to communicate to you? That depends on the type of brand activation because at a retail store for a tasting or a demo, we don't want to discriminate against anybody. But, you know, it is good to know in the back of your mind that this is a product for 25 to 39 year olds, right? And so if you see somebody that kind of fits that demographic coming, you're probably a little bit more amped to go, hey, hey, hey you need to come try this. Uh, that education is definitely communicated towards our dragons. Um, but, you know, that is something that when it comes to general brand activation, you never know, right? Like a lot of times I've done over probably 700, 800 tastings at this point myself personally and i'm still surprised when i give a sample to that one person i'm like this person ain't buying nothing They're like oh, i'll take a case of that i'm like what you know you just never know and so um you when you're doing a brain activation try to not exclude anyone but obviously if you know what your demographic is you try to go after them a little bit harder too Oh, that's great advice. Yeah, because in digital marketing, there are so many people to speak to. We have to narrow it down. True. That's so true. In person, you have no idea. And if they can taste it, if they can walk away with it right then and there, anybody's fair game. So, And I'm glad you said that, Karen, because that is the time to dial in your marketing, right? With digital marketing. And when you want to attack your demographic, that's when you should do it is in your, dim in your digital marketing strategy. But when you're doing it, don't do it in your brand activation strategy because you never know. And uh, Beatbox actually had a great uh, following with, with folks that was way out of their demographic. I'm talking about old people like me um, because of the, the activations we were doing at HEB. And for a while there, they had you know a social media following, which was surprising. Now they're a grown-up company and they're in um, 
the Tetra packs, they're not sold in five gallon, ba- uh, gallon bags anymore that, that I am their audience. Right. And so, um, it's just things like that evolve as the company evolves. Sometimes you started out with a 25 demographic and now you're at the 35. I'm, I know I'm only using age here, but you know, it's, it's important to understand that and, um, digital marketing wise, go after your demographic, but in brand activation, don't exclude anyone. Yeah, that was, that was apparent. I, th- I found it kind of, I had a little chuckle about you uh, imagining someone explaining who 50 Cent is to just, you know, <laughs> some older person who just, you know, has no idea. Um, but if <laughs> Sometimes- you can get that story across, then, you know, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Sometimes you're just like, He's a what? He's a what's it? <laughs> Never mind, sir. It's a great cognac. You want to try it? Like, he makes you know, cognac. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's just, you know, sometimes you, you have to find that little thing right then and there that, you know, that works. So, yeah, definitely. Well, you kind of gave a couple of tips. Um, if any, you talked about smaller brands getting the founders out there. What are some other tips for those small brands who who aren't maybe ready to hire dragon spirits who want to get out there and run some activations themselves. What are maybe three tips? Um, if you're just getting started, uh, one, get with as many friends and a family as you can do parties with AB testing and, and make your friends fill out your survey um, or they don't get the free product. And what I mean by that is, you know, maybe you have a new coffee drink, um, you know, invite 50 people over and tell them this is the reason for it. I'm going to do mine in one cup and another, and you're going to fill out a survey at the end. And that's, that's the, that's the cost of the party, right? That way you can start knowing right away, you know, Tito changed his vodka formula like 50 times or something uh, before he found the right formula back in the, in the late nineties. So, so that, that would be one. Um, another one would be, you know, do the brand activation yourself. And I think we kind of cover that and three, start your social media presence early. Um, if you don't know how to do that, get with, with folks that do and experts, you know, don't spend a lot of money at first. Don't be running ads in the beginning, just get it set up, right. Your website, how it looks and how your Facebook feels and do some organic posts until you kind of have it dialed in before you can start really, you know, spending that money and spending that social, um, because all of, all of it is a part of the overall strategy because it, you know, it's a loud world out there. You know, I always think of Twitter and I want to think of Twitter, I think of people just yelling at the top of their lungs, you know, and that 1 million follower guy, he's louder than everybody else. Right. But you've got to, you've got to navigate that noise with a, with a joint marketing strategy and find your fans, find your lovers. And, and, you know, and build that relationship. And then I'd say, if you want to raise money, once you have that audience, do a, do a WeFunder, man, because now you turn your customers into investors and it's ching, ching, ching all the way. Because once they put money into your company, then they're going to push you even farther. And now they're not going to have 50 beers at their next party. They're only going to have your beer because they're, they're, a, they're an owner, damn it. And they want to show all their friends. And so you build brand evangelist, but that's, uh, that's the next stage. That's for part two. That's awesome, Lamar. Well, on that note, great advice. Is there anything you would like to leave the audience with? Um, a link, final statement? Sure. Um, you know, I, I will take this moment to say we are doing our own WeFunder. If um, you like our strategy and how we think, check it out. WeFunder.com slash Dragon Spirits Marketing. Uh, we are at current at this at this time, 220K into a $1 million raise. Ooh. And then I'd also say, you know, I don't mind offering my time, 10-minute uh, calls for, for a free consultation just to ask a quick question. So um, if somebody heard something here today they liked, feel free to find me. I'm easy to find online. Uh, write me through any of my social channels. And if you, you mentioned this podcast, then I will definitely give you your 10, 15 minute free call to help you out. Awesome, Lamar. Thank you so much. And we'll provide all the links to how to get in touch with Lamar at the in the show notes. So thank you again for joining us. We really enjoyed it. Karen and Allison, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate being here today. Thank you. Thank you. 
Through My Social Circle is a CPG agency-driven podcast based out of Austin, Texas. We're excited to share more behind-the-scene insights, chats with industry leaders, and whatever else we learn along the way. Follow us on Instagram at Umai Marketing or check out our website, umaimarketing.com. Catch you back here soon.